sometimes you can really cock things up. Uh, I've got I've got all the bits back from the machine shop now. Took a little bit longer than expected, and I will explain why. G'day everybody and welcome back. Uh, I have a confession to make. I did make a cock up. Now this was a very stupid mistake and it's something that I guess was easy enough to do but um, it just shows what happens when you're not being careful. When I measured these pistons and bores I um, was running on the assumption that we had a standard size piston in there and I didn't even look at the full size measurements when I was using the micrometer. I was only concentrating on the uh, clearance measurements, so the, the microns above X, and my presumption was that X was 70 millimetres. But this barrel already had 70.5 millimetre pistons in it, so it already had half mil oversize, so I was one revolution out on the micrometer thimble. I didn't even think to check that it had been bored, and that is a bloody stupid schoolboy error. So what resulted from that was that I bundled everything up, took it off to the machine shop, and um, as you know, it took him a couple of weeks to get his act together, and he uh, finally got, got onto the job, and then he rang me and said, these pistons fall into the barrel. Uh, these new pistons are already fit. <laughs> so I bolted down there and had a look, and sure enough, so I had to buy another set of pistons. So we've now got um, one millimeter oversize pistons and rings. Uh, it was a bloody unfortunate error that cost me. And um, luckily I was able to sell the old 0.5 oversize pistons on eBay and recoup some of that money. I didn't get it all back, but you know, that's uh, live and learn. So, we've got our barrels back, they look really nice, um, got a good cross hatch in it. The first thing that we need to do before we can put them on the bike is, is have a look at the ring gap. Now I just randomly picked out one piston and rings and um, I've already had a quick look and it's a little bit, they're a little bit scary. I'll show you what I mean, we'll put these in there and we'll have a look. All right, so we've got our oil control rings here, we've got our, uh, our top ring and our second ring. Um, they are marked only that they have one millimeter oversize. There is a marking on there that states that and that will denote that if ever you see a marking on a piston ring like like this here that means it fits in the upward orientation. So I'm just going to pop it down into the bore very carefully and um, we're going to check the ring gap. Just going to use the piston as a guide just to pop it down in there. Uh, looking at the piston ring groove so that uh, it sits down in there nice and evenly. And what I might actually do is flip that around so that you can see it a bit better. Hopefully, you can see it. And see our ring gap here. So according to the Suzuki manual, the ring gap should be between six thousandths of an inch and fourteen thousandths of an inch, or between 0.15 of a millimeter and 0.35 of a millimeter. And I can tell you now, this top ring gap is bigger than that by a long shot. So that's the uh, 0.35 or 14 thou. Um, feel the gauge and it fits in there with room to spare. 15, 16. So it's two thousandths of an inch wider gap than recommended by factory. What does that mean? Uh, not a hell of a lot that I can do about that. The only thing I could do would be to um, get another set of rings and then file this out to the right size. 
This is not a high performance engine. Well, it is because it's a motorcycle and let's face it, all motorcycle engines are high performance. However, it's not a, um, a racing engine. Normally, if you buy ring kits for racing engines, they come oversized. So they will come, you know, five thou or something too small of a ring gap so that you can file them to the exact right size. These are generic, low budget, rebuild type pistons, and they are what they are. If they're a little bit big, there's not much you can do about it. Um, if they're a little bit small, then you have the opportunity to, to dress them back a little bit. It's better to be just on the fraction on the large size in terms of your ring gap than it is to be too small. Because if uh, when the ring heats up, it expands, that ring gap closes, and if it butts together, then your ring can become um, force, an, force an elliptical wear in your bore or your rings or both. So where I'm comfortable at that tooth hour, it just means that there'll be a little bit more uh, gas bypassing that top ring. But two thousandths of an inch uh, on, this, on this engine, I don't think it's going to be um, the end of the world. Now the second ring, ring, uh, ring number two, Let's um, let's get out the 0.35 millimeter or 14 thousandths filler gauge. Doesn't fit. This gap's tighter. So this was uh, the top end of the the ring gap uh, according to the Suzuki manual. So we start incrementing down. We'll go down to I will try 12 thou. Still too tight. 11, 10, 10 is very firm in there, so it's going to be probably 9 thousandths, 0.23 of a millimetre. Yep. So, that's sort of in the middle of the range um, that Suzuki recommend. So the first ring gap was a little bit loose, the second ring gap is fine. So... That's all, uh, that's all we can do there. They don't give you a clearance gap for the oil control rings. So we just need to determine if there is a gap. And there is. And there is. So I'm going to go through now and do the other three pots and if everything is okay and I don't need to file them then I'll uh, we'll move on. If I need to file them then we'll come back and file them. We were lucky. All the rings had... Dude! What? What are you doing? Well... <laughs> it's clearly a different day. You got a different shirt on. Even your watch is different. What's going on, man? You've got to have continuity. As I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. We were lucky with the ring gaps. That one um, second ring that had the smaller gap in it was the exception, not the rule. They were pretty well all around the 16,000 mark. So we don't have to file them. But what if we did? How do we do that? Well, this is a ring file. I bought this thing back when uh, I was doing the big ball kit in the XS1100 because I th was assuming that I would have to dress the rings back. As it turns out, I didn't, and in this case, I didn't. So it's it's gone unused. It's fresh out of the box. When I worked as an engine builder, we had uh, an electric one, and it even had a dial indicator on it so that you could measure how much you were taking off of the ring. But uh, these are these are you got to sneak up on it. Um, this is a ring from out of a XS1100, just one up that I had up under the house. And if we were to um, to file it, we've got to be very careful because 
this um, this edge, these rings often have a coating on them, and you've got to be careful that you don't chip that coating. So when you file these things, they recommend um, even the manufacturer of this this product here recommends that you place them up against these tapered guides, these two pins, and you squeeze the ring together, and then you grind the ring like so. However, um, that can cause problems because you're governed by the you're running parallel to the width of that grinding wheel, so you can end up with a um, a non-parallel ring groove. I've always found the best way to do it is to hold it um, with one side parallel against uh, against the wheel and just take it down one side and then you pop it in and you measure it. Now if you're going to do it with a hand file you want to make sure it's a very very fine smooth hand file and um, you just clamp the hand file in the vise and push the the ring against one side of the file trying to keep it parallel and file away from that front edge so file in well into that front edge so that you don't cause it to chip out the out the back so that's how you, that's how you 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 file a ring all right piston rings okay so what we want to do is start with the oil control rings and start with the spacer then we take the side rails and we pop the bottom one in start him just below the spacer Work him around these um, these uh, side rails are actually fairly forgiving. They're quite flexible. Now I'm going to worry about the position of the ring grooves when I actually go to put them in the barrel, but just for uh, for reference, I want the uh, the side rails to be gapped about um, 45 degrees apart That's him. All right. The number two ring, the second compression ring, making sure that our um, any markings on the ring are facing up. You can buy ring compressors. Sorry, ring expanders, uh, which make life easy. But I just use my fingers. And you just carefully. Uh, put him down spread him out and put him down into the groove and then the top ring all right I'll do that to all the others and then uh, we'll get ready to put them on the bike on the into the engine. Alrighty, uh, so I've got the base gasket on, I've got the new genuine Suzuki O rings in there. So what, um, what Suzuki are recommending here is that um, we have on the, there's an arrow on the piston denoting 
the front of the motor. That is the intake side. That is the exhaust side. The side bars for side rails for the oil control ring should be at 45 degrees, so they're 90 degrees apart, but they should be positioned at 45 degrees um, on the exhaust side. And the number one and two rings should be 45 degrees opposed on the intake side. So I'm going to flood these with oil. I don't want to get into the whole oil debate. Um, yes, we're putting in new pistons and rings. Uh, we have a new barrel. We need to lube everything up. The side skirts of the pistons, the um, the ring the rings and the barrels and everything else as we assemble. But it's not a brand new engine. So I mean, you can you can have all your debates in the world if you like about single single weight oils, mono mono uh, mono weight oils, whatever whatever you want to do. Do your research. Just use the oil that you're going to that, to assemble the motor that you're going to be used using while you're running the engine right now I'm going to put one clip in Alright, so let's squirt a bit of oil around into the conrod, uh, yes, into the small end of the conrod, all over the gudgeon pin, do a test fit, that's fine, so I've got, I've got one clip already mounted, just double check how ring gap positions now have been mucking around. Yep, they look good. Oh, well, this is where you want to be careful because uh, losing one of those clips down into the into the crankcase uh, is not a fun thing. sure he's in there properly. Yep. Alright. 